Hi guys, welcome. Today we are going to solve um, delete and end. Taking from delete code daily um, challenge. So you're given an integer array norms. You want to maximize the number of points you get by performing the following operation any number of times. You pick any um, number in the array and you're going to delete it and end that number in points. Okay. Afterwards, you're going to delete um, every element equal to um, the number minus or plus one. All right, so um, let's take an example. So here, you could pick, you could pick four. So you add four to your results. You delete every element within this array within four plus one or four minus one. So you're going to delete three or you're going to delete five. So once you've done that, you have just two remaining and you, the next number you pick obviously is going to be two. So take some time, understand the question before we proceed. So let's see how we can solve this um, with this next example. Uh, but first, the important thing you need to do first is to look at the constraints, all right? So oftentimes that would tell you um, the time complexity of the algorithm you are expected to use. In this case, uh, we have that the size of the array is about 10,000. So we could use a big of N, where N is the size of the array. That is acceptable. Also, we have that the maximum size of uh, a number in the array is also um, 10, about 10,000, okay? That also hints that we can actually loop from zero all the way to the maximum element. And for each number, we're going to compute the result. And this is indeed the approach we're going to take. Let's take a look at an example. So we have two, two, three, three, three and four, okay? Now the idea is, we have the maximum element as four. The idea is you go from zero all the way to the maximum element. And you're going to ask the question, for each, uh, for each number, what is the best I can do at that point? Okay. And let me just say this before we proceed. Let's say we are here. The only thing you need to, to know to compute the result at this point is uh, the result for the previous number. Okay. And the result for the previous number, uh, for the second previous number. So once you, you have those two computed, you can compute the answer for, for this. So that's the basic idea. Um, this is actually dynamic programming, but it's pretty straightforward. All right, so the, the first thing you're going to do before we start computing the result is to have um, a count vector or array that keeps track of uh, the number for the, the size of each number. So for example, um, two occurs twice. So that's two times two, which is four. Um, three occurs three times. So we have nine and four occurs once. So we have four. So those are the sizes we have or the count. Um, next, we compute our table. Zero is zero. One doesn't appear in the count. So we have zero for two. We're going to do one of two things. Either we take the previous result, okay? Or we include the result for two and add it to the um, last two results. So let me just write that down. So we could either skip it, in which case we get the previous result, which is zero, or we could include it. In which case, in which case we're going to get uh, 
they count for two they count for two which is four plus uh, if you skip the last result what do you get so uh, previous two results so you have zero so that's the basic idea we know that if we're going to include two then we must skip uh, 2 minus 1 and 2 plus 1. We don't need to worry about the 2 plus 1 because we can handle that when we get to 3. Okay, but since we're going to skip 2 uh, minus 1, that means we're going to skip um, 1 right here. And that's how we get to include 4 plus 0. And we have 4 as the best result. We just take the maximum of the 2. So let's keep going and this is going to be a bit clearer with more examples. So at 3, we are now here. So we can either skip it. So when we skip it, we just take the previous one, which is 4. Or we could include it. If we include it, then we need to skip the previous one and take the previous two. One. So that will be 0 plus what you get for 3. So the count for 3 is 9, and you add that to this, which is 9 plus 0. All right? So we take the maximum, which is 9. So this is 9. And finally, at 4, we do the same thing. We could either skip it, in which case we get 9. Or we could do 4 plus 4. So we take the max, which is 9. So the answer for this is 9. At the end, we just return the last result we computed. So if you look at this example, the answer is indeed 9. Um, let's take a different example quickly, just to illustrate what might happen when the, um, this is a bit different. So let's say we had... Let's say we had four twice here. So our count would be a, a little bit different. So we have two is four, three is nine, but four is eight. Okay. And now we do the same thing, zero all the way to the maximum number. So zero is zero, um, one is zero. Two, we just keep it or we include it, in which case we, we get four. Uh, for three, we just keep it. Okay. So when we skip it, we look at the previous one or we include. In which case we get what we computed, which is nine plus we skip the previous one, which is and you get zero. Okay. So here we take nine. Um, now at four, at four, we either skip it, in which case we get nine, or we could include it, in which case we get what we computed for four, which is eight, plus you skip four minus one, and you get four right here. So eight plus four. And this gives you 12. So the answer to this is indeed 12. Okay. That is the algorithm. Um, your time complexity is going basically going to be big of n. Where n is basically the maximum um, number in the array. Okay. So let's... You can pause the video and code this out. It's pretty straightforward at at any point all you need at any point all you need is either the previous number let's call that prev or uh, the number after the previous number let's call that prev two okay well, we're going to code out this next
right. So like I said, the first thing you need to do is maybe find the maximum number. In C++, you can use this max element uh, helper function. It returns a pointer, so that's why I had to de reference it. And next, you have to um, compute your count. Okay, so basically we are computing this vector or table. All right, so once you've done that, like I said, you just need two variables to solve this. Of course, you could build the entire DPRA from zero all the way to the max element, but that's not necessary. You could save some space by just keeping track of two variables. So let's show the previous one. Uh, let's set them to zero and brief to all right now starting from we could of course start from um, we, could, we could start from zero one and use if statements to check but we because we're looking at the previous two elements, it's easier to code by just starting from two. Okay, we define one as prev and then just start from two. So prev is count at one, and then this is All right, so like I said, you could do one of two, of two things. You either skip it, in which case, just give me the previous result you computed, or you include it, in which case, um, ignore the previous result, take everything after that, and then add your count. So prev2 plus count at i, All right? So, that's it. You just um, we set prev to the to the current prev and the prev for the next number you compute would be the max of skipping or including. And that's it. Once you are done, you can just return your prev. So that's the solution. Let's try this with some examples. So that seems to work and we can submit. And that got accepted. Thanks for watching.